Alright, so today we're going to be working on the 2011 AP Calc AB for response question 3. And I've zoomed in on it, so if you want to pause the video and work out the problem, and then you can resume the video and watch me solve it. Alright, so let's zoom back out. So we have this shape here. We have this area, uh, region R. And we're trying to find, for A, we're trying to find the equation of the line tangent to the graph of F. So, um, we know that F is 8 times x to the third, so it's this graph, right? Because x to the third looks like this, and then from here on it looks like that. And then g of x is sine, you know that, because of how a sinusoid, uh, you know, how it moves. Alright, so the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to just look at what we have to solve. So I know point slope form is y equals y1 uh, yeah, plus uh, dy dx of x minus x1, right? So we were given y1 and x1, right? That's negative, or that's one half and one. So y equals one plus dy dx times x minus one half, right? It's just basic point slope form. And then what we have to do is we have to take the derivative of f of x to find our slope, right? So if f of x equals eight times x to the third, f prime of x is 24 x squared. And then if we plug in a half, we have f prime of one half equals 24 times one half squared. One half squared is just one half times one half, which is a fourth. A fourth times 24 is six, right? So then we can just replace this with six. And there is our tangent line equation, right? Just pretty simple, right? All right, so now we're being asked to find the area of R. So what we do is if I make a little mini R. So here's our coordinate plane. And we have our sine of pi x. And then 8 times x to the third here. 8 times x to the third. And they intersect at 1 half, 1 right here. We're asked to find the area of this. So essentially, what we're trying, to, what we can rewrite this as, is we're trying to find the area underneath sine of pi x, right? All of this, and then just subtract the area underneath eight times x to the third, right? It's the same thing. Um, so if we set up our integral, we'd say from zero to one half. And we know this is in terms of x because both equations were given to us in terms of x, right? And um, yeah, so zero to one half as our bounds, and then our top equation is sine of pi x, and then our lower equation is eight x cubed. So we put that at the bottom, then dx. And now what we do, since this is a non-calculator problem, is we integrate, right? So, I don't know if I'll have room here. We'll just try. So, we know that the integral of sine is cosine, and then, or negative cosine, pi x. And then we put, we divide it by pi because we know that when we take the integral, we're going to take the integral of sine, or the integral of cosine first, and then the integral of the inside part. And we don't have a pi in the um, derivative, so we're going to have to get rid of that. And then the integral of that is x to the fourth, and then when you multiply or you divide eight by four, you get two. That from zero to one half. And then um, I guess I'll move up here. Erase this. So we have negative cosine of pi times one half divided by pi minus two times one half to the fourth, all of that. 
And notice here that any time the bounds include a zero, you can't just get rid of the zero. This is especially true with cosine and sine, right? Uh, sometimes with cosine, uh, if you multiply whatever is inside by zero, or you add zero or something, you don't always end up with zero, right? Cosine of zero is actually one. So you can't just always just assume that this isn't going to equal anything, it's just going to be zero. You have to make sure to plug it in. So all of this minus negative cosine of pi times zero all over pi minus two times zero to the one half. Gosh, okay. Now let's simplify things out. Negative cosine of pi over two all over pi minus two one half to the fourth power is one sixteenth. And then we can get rid of that. That's just zero. We have a negative and a negative. We have a positive cosine of zero over pi. All right, let's keep simplifying. Let me just erase this all. Let's keep simplifying. Cosine of pi over two is zero, right? If you think of your unit circle, it's zero, so this entire thing goes away. So we have negative two times one sixteenth, that's negative one eighth. And then cosine of zero, like I said before, is one, and uh, it's plus one over pi. And this is our final area of R, right? So there's a bunch of little little steps along the way when you integrate that. You should take it slowly to make sure you don't mess up because these are kind of, um, they're, they're pretty simple problems. So yeah, just take it slowly. So this next problem requires us to find the volume of a solid when R is rotated about the horizontal line Y equals one. So like before, let's graph out a little, here's our sine of pi x, then our 8x cubed, and then our line y equals 1, it's right here. So when we're trying to find the volume of a shape that isn't like complete, we use washer method, right? So if we visualize what this object is going to look like once we rotate it around y equals 1, it's going to have, uh, it's going to look something like this, right? It's going to have this little uh, triangle shape that's missing once we rotate it, right? So what we have to do is we have to find the volume of the outer shape, you see here this outer shape, and then subtract this inner, um, let me, we have to subtract this part, right? Do you see it? So to do that, what we do is we're gonna have to use this from A to B, pi times integral from a to b of big R squared minus little r squared dr, right? So um, big R is the big radius, okay? So that means just like, in terms of this problem, whenever I try to find the big radius, I just take the point or the line that you're rotating around and I draw a line until I hit the bottom curve, right? So then we basically do the same thing that we did for our area, right? We want to find um, this area and then just square it. So our top function would be y equals 1, and then our bottom function is 8x cubed. So from 0 to 1 half, right? Because this is in terms of dx. The way I like to think about it is um, since our the line that we're reflecting or revolving around is horizontal, we're going to want to draw a uh, rectangle perpendicular to that, and we know that this here is our dx. That's the way I always memorize it, is just the rectangle and then whichever, um, whichever thing represents this, either dx or dy, that's what you want to write everything in terms of. So. This is y equals 1. Suppose it was, uh, we're revolving it around um, x equals 1, so over here. 
we would draw perpendicular a rectangle and then this here is dy so everything would have to be in terms of y so you'd have to rewrite everything all right so continuing along so because we've determined that this is all in terms of x we know that our limits of integration are also going to be in terms of x so from zero to one half and then we've determined that our big r our big radius is going to be uh, one minus x to the x times x, excuse me, 8 times x to the third uh, squared, right? This would be our r, or big R, and we have to square all of that. This is an important step. Don't, sometimes if you have, um, if you have a function that is already squared, you might forget to put in that squared, but this squared is really important, right? and then we subtract our little radius. And for the little radius, what I like to do is I take the line that we're revolving around and I draw it down to the second, um, the second function. So it would be top minus bottom, so one minus sine of pi x, all of that squared dx. So this is our little r. And then since it says write but do not evaluate, this would be our uh, final answer. It's the end screen. Click on one of these links to be directed to that playlist. And don't forget to subscribe!